Oops. Hello, I am a cult of NXT. Yes, and my name is Hello Tom. And I would definitely like to thank Dr. Tom for making his presence known. Because, wow, that was an amazing show for NXT. These NXT takeovers do not really disappoint. I think really with the exception of just two matches. This show was amazing. And what's even more amazing? That Dr. Tom, through some algorithm or some complex mathematical formula spreadsheet database thing, whatever academics do, he predicted every match correctly with the exception of the bonus of Candice LeRae making an entrance. But we'll see what happens on NXT TV, I guess. Again, you really do need the network for that. I'm not shelling out money for the network. I don't care if it is 90. It's still not worth it because after two months. Yeah, we were listening. Again, I do have some production value. <laughs> and I'll get to some, something about production value later. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I have yet to change the name because I'm semi working on stuff. And things at work are becoming more interesting by the day. So I haven't had a chance really to focus on certain things. But I think everyone else who has a real life can appreciate that. But enough about me. Let's talk about the cult of NXT. Wow. First of all, I did see the pre I did catch some of the pre-show. And for the takeover pre-show, it was okay. Um, they do a lot of talking, but for this pre-show, they did the end of year awards. Well, we'll go over those very quickly because they actually did have some meaning, and it was actually pretty cool. So for the breakout star, again, this is just a recap of the pre-show. The breakout star of the year. Is Ricochet. Again, anyone can see that coming. He is the man, even more so than Neville, who defies the gravity. I mean, his flippy, flippy stuff. Oh, it's so good. And it's so meaningful, and it's just so much fun. But then he accepted it, and you got a golden bell for that. I don't feel like getting a copyright infringement, so I won't show that. Again, this is just a pre show. Um, for the match of the year, it was Johnny Gargano versus Andrade Cien Almas. Again, another excellent choice. Can't really fault that. I think that's a lot of people's match of the year in NXT. Maybe with their Gargano Ciampa matches. Coming in probably a close second. I mean, even overall, the entire wrestling world. I'll say the number one match of the year was probably, and I'm not even going to call this just a match. It's going to be the whole Okada Omega trilogy. But again, this comes, I mean, for NXT, this is right there, though. This, this is up there with the Okada Omega matches, and they're some of the best matches ever. Again, that's really high praise. Again, kind of uh, all the standard stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so thankful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna win my match. Whatever. The male competitor of the year was the psycho killer, Tommaso Bomaye Ciampa. Man, he's the best. He just smiles and. Just, just takes a look at his belt, takes a look at the trophy, goes back to the belt, back to the trophy, begins to, to, to hold and, and, and cuddle and caress and stroke. 
And this is looking really creepy, isn't it? He's good at being creepy. Just walked away. Didn't say anything of his award. Again, very classic Tommaso Ciampa. I mean, he talks to his belt. He runs down grannies in the audience. So good is Tommaso Ciampa. He, he deserved it. The female athlete, how are you saying? <laughs> it was funny. Because on the way out, she was humming her own Barbara scene, her party scene. Which is kind of funny. Um, a very, very humble, very thankful. Um, I like the angry Japanese Asuka better, though. It just. Oh! Kyrie Sane's just way too baby faced. And watch out for Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai as the second coming of the Jumping Bomb Angels when the WWE finally get the women's tag team belt thing up and running. I think that's the Elimination Chamber, which is the February pay per view. And I'll be doing a live stream that as well as long as I'm not closing that night. Again, I'm doing this late because I had to work today, so I kind of had to kind of watch things. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah, watch things online because there are ways to get free NXT online. I can't say that because then I'll be kicked off and of banned for life. I mean, the tag team of the year is obviously undisputed era. I mean, I think Adam Cole. Or in kayfabe, Adam Cole, baby, and Bobby Fish accepted the awards. Bobby Fish came to the announce table with the award, just, just, you know, the bang, 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 just ringing it, <laughs> playing with it like it was a toy, so it was some trophy. Again, my DIY shirts in the wash that that time, so I have my clothesline wrestling shirt. Again, very quick thing. Um, pro wrestling tees is. I think it's a 15% off the Royal Rumble sale. I'm going to wait probably until um, WrestleMania, February, March, April. So three more months till I get my new Macho Man shirt. I can deal with that because I think then they're 20% off. I think. I know I think one day it was like buy, f buy four, get one free. I forget what event that was. I think WrestleMania is just a straight 20% off your whole purchase. Um, Bobby Fish just kind of runs down the, the one announcer, Patrick something. I have no idea who he is. Uh, Charlie Cruz is there. She's an kind of up and, upcoming star there. And then overall, Kyrie Stane was the winner overall. And again, she was even super happy. Again, let's take a little break. And now we're back to some wrestling action, folks. And again, the only, my only thing is that the WWE has a real issue with match order. Not saying it's necessarily bad. It's weird. And it sometimes either raises or lowers expectations. In this case, we start off with War Raiders versus the Undisputed Era. Yeah. I can do that a lot smoother than Dr. Tom, but he doesn't understand what it's like in the street. I collect my aluminum in the street, therefore I know what the street's like. And with this, it was the Undisputed Era was represented by Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong. Wow. I mean, this was a fast-paced, fast -paced, furious-paced match the entire time. It was really it was amazing. First of all, War Raiders had an amazing entrance. They had a WrestleMania type entr entrance. And it was awesome because they had the, the Vikings kind of lined up 
you know, V and, and then of course Roe and Hansen were there on uh, one on top of the other in the middle of the V. Amazing visual. None of the other entrances came close. Alistair Black always has a good one, but it's that thing you always kind of expect from him. War Raiders. They have good music, a good visual presentation. Oh my gosh, can they wrestle? I mean, it was a fast pace, fast paced match. Um, War Raiders had the early advantage, and I just love it when tag team partners use each other as weapons. Um, I think Hansen. Or was it Roe? Whoever the bigger guy is, body slammed his partner onto Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong outside the ring. Again, that was great. Kyle O'Reilly is a smart wrestler, though. He knows I'm not going to take this big guy out. I have to go for his knees. Um, again, early the, early, the War Raiders had the advantage. Once Kyle O'Reilly kind of smartened up and got to Matt Pace wrestling, more of his classic. MMA style wrestling. I mean, he's smart enough. I mean, Kyle O'Reilly. Wow. He is the absolute best seller. I mean, people say Shawn Michaels is number one. Dolph Ziggler might be 1A. Kyle O'Reilly is up. He's, oh, it's, it's a pleasure to watch him work. Roderick Strong is the master of the backbreaker. Every version of the backbreaker. And he has so many. Um, the fact that the big guy can do cartwheel by a man of his size and does like the lethal injection and, and, and backflip, back elbows, and, and flippy stuff. I'm a big guy. I've done flippy stuff once. That takes a lot of guts. Again, it was just such a fast, furious match. Um, there were great false finishes. They would hit finisher after finisher. Eventually, War Raider did do their kind of combo move. And the War Raiders won. This was an amazing filet mignon match. And now, this is what I mean. When I say the WWE has some booking issues, because then, like, they had a flaming on match, number one match. The crowd was amazingly hot. They were popping. They, they were going crazy. In fact, it was getting so hot, I need a sip of my little beverage here. Oh, shoot. I got it. Hurry up. I have to, go to, I have to be at work in nine hours. And the next match we have... Matt Riddle versus Kai Sono. <laughs> the way Matt Riddle can kick off his flip-flops, someone's getting a free souvenir. I mean, that was just amazing. He does like a jumping side kick with each foot, and the flip-flops go flying off. Um, for the most part, most of this match was just really... Uh, Riddell's, again, known for his MMA moves. Again, the strength of Riddell, he picked up Kai Sono a couple times for, like, gut wrench suplexes. That was amazing because Kai Sono, I've seen him in person. He's no small guy. And Kai Sono's vicious with the kicks and elbows. He's also smart because he realizes Matt Riddell's not wearing shoes. <laughs> so whenever he had to get out of a move, he, he, he began to stomp Riddell's feet, which is smart. Again, smart wrestler. Smart veteran wrestler. He bites the toes of Matt Riddell. Again, you're not wearing feet. You're not protected. Hey, you can bite the toes for four seconds. Ruffle will allow it. And the foot stop. It was, it was really good. Um, it was a weird ending. I think Matt Riddell won. And I'm going to say he won because the rest, ref stopped it. And Riddle's music was playing. So I guess it was a referee stoppage, which is kind of weird in the WWF because he was just wailing away on Kaya Sono. I don't know. I mean, this is a kind of 
weird match. It was good. I'm gonna say it's it's a cheeseburger. No, it's not even that. Only the ending was so wonky. This was really a ham sandwich match. It was really rare for any NXT takeover. But again, that, that whole ending sequence, where you're not sure what's going on, it's like, huh? And again, it followed a Flaming Young match. Whichever match had to follow. I mean, unless it was going to be two of the other matches. Gargano or Gargano Ricochet or Tampa Black. I mean, they were going to have a tough time following in the War Raiders smash because that was amazing. So that was really a, that ham sandwich match. It was just weird. Um, next we had Johnny Gargano versus Ricochet. I do like that new smiley face logo. It's um, a smiley face. With like teeth instead of the smile, it's really cool looking. I, I like that. It kind of shows Johnny Gargano's darker side. Again, with this, oh my gosh, it was so amazing. There were tosses, counters, reversals, flippy stuff by both. There were fists flying, kicks flying, reversals, counters, submissions, everything. This match literally had everything. Gargano's more brawling, but that makes sense because he is a heel in this match. Ricochet can do no wrong. He can do flippy, flippy stuff forever. Um, again, it was a with Gargano and Ricochet, they are such good technical mat wrestlers. You add in the strikes from Gargano, the flippy stuff by Ricochet. Oh, it's amazing. Johnny did take that one nasty spell. It looks so realistic. He got uh he got Huracronid fell on the outside of the ropes and he fell weird on his back. Oh that hurt me. That hurt you. That probably hurt his wife Candace Gargano. And Evil Johnny. Johnny hit the reverse run on the outside. Evil Johnny is good. Nailed a brain buster. There's a move I haven't seen in a while. A brain buster on the exposed concrete floor. Oh, then he pushed Ricochet in. Ricochet was hitting all kinds of flippy stuff. I mean, going off the top rope for everything. I, I know he did get caught because he went to the well once too often. But after that brain buster on the concrete, that would kill me. He just rolled in a ricochet. One, two, three. And we have a new United you North American champion, Johnny Gargano. And this was a filet mignon match. The only thing I'm really curious about is I want to know Where's Candice LeRae? This is his wife we're talking about. But WWE has butchered the role of Candice LeRae in NXT. Hopefully they can do something with her. I mean, my absolute fear, they brought her up from the Indies where she was having so much fun and allowed to do what she, she normally does. Just like a, a Princess Kimberly. And they just don't know what to do with her. Which is a crime against wrestling. It's like when they did nothing with Princess Kimberly. Ooh, NXT. And they, they just don't know what to do with some people sometimes. They have a wealth of riches, I guess. Can't do everything with everyone. They should. Especially Candice LeRae. 
Um, then the next match, you have Shayna Baszler defends the Women's Champion versus Bianca Belair. Again, it, it was okay. It was an okay match. Um, again, you had a nice formal announcement. This was a really slow starting match. Again, a lot of kind of rest holds and collar and elbow ties up. And there was some good stuff the outside of the ring. It just seemed kind of quick and forced. It really had no natural smooth pace. Even if you are going to be a brawler, you do want to have some kind of pace to your match, some kind of rhythm to your match. This really didn't have any. Um, Baszler was, again, she's a smart wrestler. She's a smart grappler. She started to use Bianca Belair's hair against her. One part, she used her hair. Her body, Bianca's body was here. Ring post was here. So here's her hair. And then she just pulled her hair and, and rammed her into the ring post that way. So it was kind of, that was kind of cool. It was innovative. Um, again, there was a rough bump. Um, Hero and Jasmine Dukes came in, but to no avail. Bianca Belair took care of both of them. And then it was like a seven count when the ref was out. Uh, eventually, Baser does get in the more the Dan Severn choke and just kind of applies that several times. And 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 Baser just, I'm um, sorry, Bianca Belair just kind of passes out. I don't think she taps out. She she goes the face way. This was a good match. Uh, to me, at, at least there was an ending that I could understand. So it's a cheeseburger match. Unlike the Caius Ono Matt Riddle match, I understood the ending. Again, it was good. I had this kind of as my snooze match. I was right about that. Well, I was right about everything. Match of the night was... I don't know. Match of the night I was quite wrong with because match of the night was, was the tag team match. Stone Cold Lock. I got Riddell. And this was actually kind of a snooze match. So I got... So Dr. Tom got some things right. Well, he got everything. So then we have the main event of the evening. We have Tommaso Ciampa versus Alexander Black. And again, with this match, you have the good formal introduction to the match. Again, a lot of outside stuff, um, kind of jockeying for position. With this, this was really good, more so than the other than the women's match, when they did rest holds, they did them really with purpose and to advance the match. Like they would go out, it would be a test of strength. Who's going to be stronger? Who's going to get pushed into the corner? Who's going to be stuck in the corner? Versus just saying, and then they would do it outside of the ring, which is a little bit different too. So they continued this. Both wrestlers refused to give, which is good. Again, very classic Matt, Ra Matt wrestling. Oh, oh wow. Champo uh, again, he used his champion's advantage. He's like, hey, I have a 10 count. You have to get me in the ring. I'll take a count of loss. <laughs> my, my, my patience is staying with me. That was, that's still a great visual. Again, the fact that he can do that, run down grannies at the same time. That's good. And um, he goes after Alistair's knee. And a couple of those knees, the way he manipulated that knee, ooh, that hurt me. And I have a bad knee, and I know what it's like to have that knee bent the wrong way. I almost punched a doctor in the face because he had me lying, lying back on the table. Oh, does this hurt? Yes! It hurts. What's wrong with you? Weird. So when Champa smells blood, he goes all psycho killer. He focused on that knee for the entire match. And again, that knee actually cost Black the match. And Champa's smart. 
Um, he does mo- he does do- he does make the one mistake, the classic the classic heel mistake of mocking Alistair Black when he starts to pick him up with his foot. Not something you want to do. Again, with this, it took like three or four of his finishers, which is, I mean, it's a modified pedigree, but he picks them up straight like a butterfly pile driver. Instead of going for the pile driver, he kind of does the pedigree. So it's, it's like a, that's, that's good, but I think it's like, like the fairy tale ending or something like that. Dark fairy tale. I forget it. It's good looking though. Um, again, he got caught by the black mask, but he was again. He's a smart wrestler. He was just lying there on his back. Uh, he at least had some sense just to kind of roll on his stomach. So when Alistair Black covered him, it wasn't a pinfall because his shoulders weren't to the mat. Again, smart wrestling. You don't need to be a brain surgeon. Then he gets off like like three or four of them. He did get the ref, ref involved. Can pull the ref in front of him. This match really had everything. I mean, it had him stroking and caressing that belt. He had that belt. Oh, who's this? He had that belt. He held it. So what's that? What's that? What are you trying to tell me? Wrestling's no, it's not. It's not like that. You're so good, though, aren't you? Don't give me that. Look. Wait, what's this? What are you doing to me? Did you give me the middle claw? Uh oh, are you gonna give everyone else the middle claw? She gave you guys the middle claw. See, cause this is how. Tommaso Ciampa treats that, that championship. I treat my kitty cat. She's good. Aren't you? Are you purring? What was that? I can't say that on YouTube. I'll be demonetized. Okay, go back to your nap. We're, we're going to bed. Uh-oh. There goes my microphone. And oh, there she goes. I'm going to get some food or something. There we go. But again, that's, that kind of illustrates how Tommaso Ciampa treats his belt. And I'll tell you what, this match was amazing. This again was another filet mignon match. I mean, I don't know how. I mean, he is. I mean, Kenny Omega and, and Okada is a five star match machine. Dragano and Champ are pretty close, though. And more so, this gives a tease to the dark DIY. DIY reunix over their heels. Yes! 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 Yes. yes, yes, yes. There we go. So again, in this case, with the help of Dr. Tom, I was inside of the head of Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Because I predicted all the winners of the matches. I think the only thing I didn't take into account, and this is probably me being the fan, is that there was no Candice LeRae involvement. I don't know. I just hope they don't let her go like they, like they, they're treating her like garbage, like my princess Kimberly. Nothing I can do about that, though, folks. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, program notes. Tomorrow I do have to work. I'm probably going to miss the pre-show because I think the pre-show starts at 5. That's early. I might be wrong. I don't know. I think I've been wrong a couple times. I think this starts at 5. 
Pre-show starts at five. The match, the main events, the main well, the main card starts at seven. So I will be back in time for the main card. You might catch me eating some breakfast. I have that. If you have subscribed, you'll get a notification that it'll be up in like another well, less than a day now. Gee, let's see. Twelve noon. Plus seven. I mean, been about 19 hours. A little bit less than 19 hours. Again, you might see me kind of start eating breakfast and I'll be back and forth having food. But I'll definitely keep you guys in, in the know as to who is involved in the in their respective rumbles. Again, I have my whole predictions already set up. And again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see everyone tomorrow for the Royal Rumble. Bye.